Well, I just got home from spending an entire week without clothes on. Now, if you watch this YouTube channel regularly, you probably know that I already spent a lot of time in a state of undress. But what was unusual about this week is I spent the entire week without clothes on, surrounded by other people. That's right, I spent all of last week at a gay nude campground in the state of West Virginia, of all places. And between you and me, it was pretty damn magical. I feel like it's something I talk about fairly regularly, that society doesn't give us the space to be enthusiastically ourselves. We're expected to conform to certain standards, or certain behaviors, or certain ways of acting, or dressing, or pretending to be to fit the societal mode. And not that I have anything against clothes, by all means, right? Like, I love to feel like soft fabrics on my skin and to feel cocooned by something warm and cozy. But clothing can create a barrier for us to hide behind. And if you really truly want to get to know somebody, there is something to be said about letting it all, figuratively and literally, hang out. And so it was so refreshing to have the experience where I could just walk out of my cabin door buck naked and go have conversations with other people who were also literally balls out and to feel seen and to feel vulnerable and to feel like I got to connect with others in a meaningful way. I know this is something I've said several times now, but I remember the first time me and my friends from high school ever got naked together. We went to a Korean spa and it was the first time we had seen each other fully in the buff. And after we left the spa, we all felt like we had gotten to know each other and understand each other in a more deep and profound way, even though we had been friends for like 15 years at this point. So there's something to be said about the vulnerability that happens about just being fully exposed with another person about letting them see all of you and feeling like there's nothing to hide behind. Because I think that's what we all really want as human beings, right? To be seen, to see another, to hear someone else, to be heard ourselves, to share our story, to be connected, to be a happy human. We need vulnerability, we need connection, but especially in this modern world with technology, it is so effing hard to find sometimes. So maybe what we all really need is just take some time to strip down show off, and let ourselves be fully seen. Because something I personally believe is that each body, each spirit, each person is beautiful. Right? You don't need to be the most fit, the most aesthetically symmetrical, or handsome, or pretty, or the most well-endowed, or the most perfectly coiffed, or the most whatever. You're still beautiful. Because every living being on this planet is worthy of love, is worthy of kindness, is worthy of respect. And we should all get an opportunity to feel in our bodies and sensual and attractive and delicious. And it was so cool to be in this environment where there was every expression of age, of body type, of mobility level, every expression of what it looks like and means to be a man from gender fluid to femme to masculine to everything in between. And I love to see that people were being accepted and valued and being included, even if they weren't quote unquote the aesthetically the most hot. Because let's face it, queer culture can be rather judgmental. And I know I come with a lot of privilege because, you know, a lot of people find me attractive, but it can be kind of mean. And I know I, I have felt it, right, of not being enough, not being blank enough for someone. You know, I've had exes who have point blank talked about other people they've hooked up with who were so much more attractive that there's a reason they're an ex. But still, it was it was wonderful to be in an environment where everyone was invited to the party and everyone had a seat. And I felt remarkably privileged to get to be there. So over the course of the week, I got to swim naked, play cards naked, shower with a bunch of people naked, hang out in a steam room and sauna naked, hot tub naked, hike in the woods naked, eat dinner naked, a lot of things naked. And I felt like I made genuine connections, genuine friends. You know, like it was so awesome to just like hang out at a campfire with other guys with everyone just in the buff. It's so cool to just walk down the street and say, hey, how are you? My eyes are up here, but cool, nice to meet you. I felt seen, I felt valued, I felt like these interactions were real. And I felt like there was a shared sense of humanity in a way that sometimes it doesn't feel just walking down the street. Like, I just can't tell you how nice it was to everywhere you go to have people actually look at you and say hi or smile or make eye contact like I don't know about you but where I live like you walk down the street and people tend to ignore each other and after years of city living where that's the norm you start to feel a little less human a little less valuable a little less seen and like you matter so 
to have a week where, you know, I felt valued in my humanness, to feel like I got to partake in a shared experience with other men. It was really healing and very holy. So I can't recommend it enough. Maybe go see if there's a nude campground or resort or sex positive sort of environment where you can go spend some time in. Go to a Korean spa like me and my friends did. Go spend some time at a locker room in a gym if need be. Go find some space where you can really just let it all loose and allow yourself to connect with another human being without all this stuff getting in the way. And I get that I've already said this, but I think it bears repeating that what we want more than anything else as human is just to be seen and to see someone else, to really be there. I mean, let's face it, we spend our time behind screens and when we do see people, we're distracted, we're not present, we're afraid of connection, we're afraid of rejection. I think one of the saddest things I saw when I was there were the people who would hang out on the sidelines, not engage, and be on their phone on hookup apps trying to talk to people. It's like, hello, we're right here, just come over and say hi. We're so afraid of having somebody scorn us, reject us, tell us no. But if we live our life in that fear, we're never gonna find love, we're never going to find happiness. Because real validation doesn't happen on a computer screen, it happens in real life, body to body, face to face, dick to dick sometimes, genitals to genitals. To be human means to be vulnerable, to be exposed, to take a risk. And one of the things I've said for a long time is that the quality of a life can often be measured by the amount of bravery with which it's lived, right? Like worldly success doesn't matter, riches doesn't matter, amount of toys that you've collected doesn't matter. What matters is how much courage are you practicing? How much are you daring to be the best version of you, to get what you want, to have fun, to seek love, to enjoy pleasure, to be with another person, to be with yourself? I mean, that's what life is all about, right? To be connected, to be part of something more than just your limited sense of self. It's one of the things I'm learning to appreciate more and more, is joy for the sake of joy. I, for much of my life, have been somebody who thought there always has to be a bigger purpose. We have to be working towards something greater than just mere gratification. But one of the lessons I've been called to take to heart lately is that joy is the reason the universe spawned into existence. For the sheer joy of it. Joy and pleasure and bliss and fun are not to be undervalued. They are gifts and lessons and valuable in and of themselves. There doesn't always need to be that higher purpose. So how much are you cultivating joy in your life? And I don't know about you, but getting to be naked with other human beings, for me, brings me joy. Being in Germany and going to a co-ed bathhouse brings me joy. Going to a spa brings me joy. Hanging out naked with my friends brings me joy. Hey, just being naked by myself brings me joy. And that is beautiful. That is sacred. That is wonderful. So how much courage are you living with? How much joy are you cultivating in your life? How much are you willing to risk bearing it all to see another person and be seen yourself? Are you willing to risk being a fool, being silly, being rejected, being weird in order to find love, to find happiness, to find connection, to find your spiritual brothers and sisters and romantic partners and a wild and blissful life? Because I don't know about you, but I want that. I want a full, radiant, ecstatically alive, brilliant life. I want to feel like I've sucked the marrow out of life and had a great time by the time I'm dead. That I realize life is for the living and it's not just for playing it safe. It's about being bold, taking risks, and having fun. And so I'm so excited to have gotten to share a little bit about my experience with you. And yes, I found a lot of joy and a lot of fun while I was there. But the main thing that I found was a connection to myself, to my beautiful partner, to my wild, expansive, ecstatic self, and I wish the same for you. So go out there, go balls out, and have some fun this summer. And at the end of the day, remember, this is your chance to step outside your comfort zone and experience something greater. We live our life in too tight of boxes, too constrained, too afraid of the wild. And most societies throughout time gave their citizens the opportunity to experience the ecstatic, to go hog wild, to lose control, like a bacchanalia of sorts. So when and where is your ecstatic time for yourself? So go out there, have some fun, and maybe send me some pictures of your adventures. I'm Kay, this is Ecstatic Self. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Namaste.